Alrighty guys, welcome back to Let's Play Bioshock. Sorry for the incredibly long delay between the last upload and this one. As I said, I would have been taking a break because of all the Dragon Con videos and stuff, which I like to think turned out pretty nicely. I think that the uh, the main Dragon Con video was fairly lacking considering it was basically the same video I made last year with the same music from the same games. And um, the music kind of fell flat after a while, I think, but... Uh, I just had too much footage and not enough music to go with it, and then there was not enough footage in other places. It seems like the parade just sort of overwhelms the entirety of the rest of the uh, the event, so maybe I'll try to work around that next year, who knows. The fact that I even had that camera this year was a surprise to me, so um... anyway, back to this game. I'll probably be taking another break. I want to, now that I'm back on track, I'll probably try to finish this LP and... Uh, I'll probably be taking another break after this LP is done to get, uh, just to get my head straight and to get started on, uh, Fall of Cybertron right afterwards. So, uh, there's a bunch of guys that were going to ambush us here, as you can see, and, uh, this is a scripted event, so there's plenty of exploding barrels lying around. This is where we're going to demonstrate the obscene brokenness of the telekinesis, as I've said countless times before, so, um, we just utterly blew those guys away. And now my wallet is full again, which means I need to go buy stuff. I've kind of been neglecting to buy stuff because I've pretty much confirmed that with my conservative uh, use of ammo, I can pretty much survive purely off of the ammo that I find lying around and I don't really need to um, buy it really at all. But there we go, Sonic Boom. But uh, I'll be a little bit more trigger happy now now that I can afford to buy ammo that I don't need. Don't you dare touch that health machine. Shoot you in the crotch for that. Totally unintentionally, but whatever. Sometimes I don't even realize where the health machines are in the environment until the enemies go after them. It's like, oh hey, there's a health machine here. Apparently he knew it was here. But well, I sure didn't. And that guy, um... One shot at him with a crossbow. I'm gonna try to be using that more often now. But, uh, there is our objective down here. It is the audio diary that's going to tell us about the bomb thingy. And the bomb thingy is our actual objective in this level, but more on that when we actually get to it. Uh, we get Security Evasion 2 here, which I would imagine would be useful if you actually like Security Evasion 1, which I don't. So we're going to ignore it. <clears throat> Despite the fact that it looked like a frag grenade, I don't think it actually blew up on him, so... Whatever, I need to be researching these Houdini splicers too, I've been kind of neglecting that. Anyway, while that audio diary is going, we already know what it's going to say. So we're just going to auto-hack this panel thingy here, this circuit breaker, which is going to allow us to walk into the water without being electrocuted and get some more stuffs, including another audio diary. And some more incendiary bolts, which are, as I said before, some of the most useful ammo in the game, as far as, like, just regular encounters go, with taking out enemies with a single shot. And I'll be demonstrating that hopefully soon, if not right now. There we go. For some reason, his little, yeah, like I said, one shot. <laughs> that little um, teleportation thing that he did there sucked in the, uh, the uh, incendiary bolts from the table towards him for some reason, but no explanation for that whatsoever. Instead, he's just splicing his mob up. Giving them more and tougher plasmids. There's an arms race on here in Rapture, but it's not about who can build the best guns and the biggest bombs. It's about who can become less of a man and more of a monster. A man and more Andrew Ryan dialogue. That's a marvel. Another man happens to be on a plane that crash lands on the same city in the middle of the ocean. Why? That sounds more like a miracle. Well, I formally apologize, Mr. Ryan, but I do not believe in miracles. Anyway, he seems to think there's something suspicious about us, which um, seems highly unlikely, but we will see. Anyway, this is the area where um, essentially the bomb thingy is going to be. And there's lots of little side rooms around here where there's some loot that we can acquire. None of which is terribly important, but uh, it's there anyway. 
Also, there's a turret over there, as well as a big daddy. There's um, these are the areas that this is this is definitely a good area to try to get a big daddy to spawn if you're trying to get one to spawn. You would think by opening those, it would just show the, you know, the what's what the inventory is inside of the object instead of actually just opening it and just letting you have the loose I the loose items that are in there. But whatever. If that makes any sense. Anyway, I don't really want to mess with any of the big daddies right now, and there's a specific reason for that, not other than the fact that I usually wait till later on in the level to do that. So we need to get down there somehow. Oh crap, these turrets, I forgot. Yeah, let's go ahead and freeze those and hack them. Uh, they will be crucial in taking out a big daddy later on, so I'm going to hack the both of them. Which is going to be easy to do because I have the auto hack and they, instead of them start shooting at each other rampantly by hacking the first one. <clears throat> which usually results in some unpleasant mayhem. Anyway, this room right here is loaded with... Uh, trap bolts as you can see so we're going to pick up a corpse and we're going to loot it in midair and then we're going to toss it into the trap bolts and have them be triggered all simultaneously if we can but uh, I figured that's easier than trying to dodge your way through all these things or, or moving them all around with the telekinesis just use the telekinesis once it's more uh, energy efficient that way to just lift up an item once and then toss it through all these things there seems to be a lot of kinetic energy behind this electricity for some reason, because it sends chairs and crap flying throughout the room, and maybe that's just the tension of the cable snapping. Uh, either way, I'm trying to apply physics to a game that uses the Unreal Engine. I shouldn't be doing that. And I just failed to use physics by jumping into that electric bolt there. Anyway, um, the reason why we're in here, of course, is another audio diary. There's also another power to the people station, but most importantly, one of our objectives for the bomb thingy is in this room. But that's that's sort of secondary right now. I would have waited until um, I actually had the bomb objective to come in here and get that. But I figured I'm in here anyway, and I want to get this power to the people station. So uh, as you can see, there's only a few upgrades left, and we have all the weapons now. So we're getting you, that's how you can tell we're getting close to the end of the game. So um, the next the next ones that I want to get are going definitely going to be the crossbow breakage chance and the grenade launcher damage increase if I can. But right now I figured I'd get the shotgun ready to fire upgrade. So now we can go all out and just spam buckshot when, oh crap, yeah, when we pick up the nitro there, when we, when we open the switch to pick it up, that turret pops out there. So now we have a third turret to add to the mix here. If we can get all three of them to gang up on this big daddy, that'd be great. But, um... Now you will witness the completely unfair decimation of this poor big daddy. Cover your eyes, children. Yeah. That was three turrets and the electric gel. He was utterly raped. And I hate to use that term, but it does apply. Anyway, I probably should have... I definitely should have researched that little sister before going ahead, going ahead and harvesting it, though. But oh well. What can men do now? Nothing. Anyway, there's a little side area over here that, uh... I might as well research his corpse, I suppose. Yeah. I did with that what I could. I think I'll come to that area on the way back, though. I think I want to go ahead and get the bomb now. Well, actually, I could go over here. Nah, never mind. I really want to cut down on time on this level because this level can really drag its feet for no reason. So, I really just want to get through this level as fast as possible. And there's a new tonic there called Damage Research, which can be useful if you know how to exploit it properly. But I just like to enhance the research with the photographer's eye instead. So. Should send the core into compensation mode, push power down the line, and trigger the circuit breaker on Ryan's gate. Well, that's the theory. It'll either work like a charm, or blow up half of Rapture. Nothing ventured. 
Alrighty, so now it is time to collect all the components for the bomb, and um, we have to find uh, R34 wire clusters, and there's four of them we have to find now. There are already a few existing Big Daddy corpses throughout the map, and we can go around and um, harvest uh, those, for, we can collect those from those if we want to, but I want to go ahead and show off all the um, Big Daddy encounters on screen now, so I can go ahead and show you them collecting all of them from, these, from the corpses that the Big Daddy's going to kill. And because of one, we already killed one, so that's, a, that's the second one down, so this is going to be the third one. And the fourth one we should find uh, from the third Big Daddy. Like I said, we could get them from the other ones, but I think since we need to kill them anyway, this just gives us an excuse. And there's also a demonstration of the uh, the rate of fire enhancement on the shotgun there, and it's obscenely powerful, as you as you clearly saw there. I swear, people would not know what to do with themselves if auto um, auto shotguns existed back in the day. Also, we definitely want to be on the lookout for these things. These are the uh, quarter cans of ionic gel, and here's the third big daddy. And um, those those quarter cans of ionic gel are lying around the map uh, quite frequently, so you should have no trouble finding those. And then the last ingredient is the nitro, which we already collected. So I'm basically trying to condense this level down as much as possible by editing around here, and um, I think it's a good decision. Like I said, I pretty much showed up all these optional areas, and this is a little side. Conveniently, I ran into this big daddy here. Which is like a little side area with a safe here that I can show off. I think this is, yeah, this is the area with the turret that I said would be a good place to spawn it. And uh, the, because you have this turret here, it's also another um, additional offensive tool you have there. So that completes two things. That's all three of the little sisters harvested in this level. And that's all four of the R34 wire components we've acquired. Now, at any point, you can go and return to the bomb and, and uh, apply the components to it. And you can also... Um, the the request arrow is constantly pointing pointing towards the bomb. So if at any point you're lost, you need to find the bomb again, it leads back to it. But if you're trying to find your way around the map, that can be kind of inconvenient because it's always pointing back to the same place. If you're like, oh, I'm going to follow the arrow again, it's not going to point you to where you, the, the uh, items are. It's only going to point you back to the bomb. So this objective is much like the one in Arcadia with the uh, the Lazarus Vector. It's a non-linear thing where we have to find a bunch of random things and then um, return them to a specific location. So that's that does help with the, with the lack of... Uh, it does help uh, break up the linearity of this game a little bit and make it a little bit more open where you can go and explore and get these items in a non-linear fashion wherever and however you want to. But I definitely, I think I like that objective a lot more than getting the Lazarus Vector though, mainly just because I don't like Arcadia. But I do like the Farmer's Market aspect of that objective though. Yeah, these Leadhead Splicers, if I didn't say so before, are pretty tough with their uh, difficulty spike there. Yeah, that's pretty much all we have to do now. We have completed the bomb, so now we're going to go up to Ryan's front door and plant the damn thing, and it will unlock it for us in a rather crude but effective way. Now, this is an area we could have gone to earlier, but I didn't really see the need to. But there are two turrets down here, and I definitely want to freeze and hack those as fast as possible so we can have those on our side. Luckily, they are not within range of each other, so they won't start shooting each other like I'm always worried that they will when there's two turrets in the same place and you hack the first one. But we can go ahead and froze those. And uh, now we can plant the... We can start converting this magma energy thingy, whatever, to this geothermal nonsense to start the um, the elevator. It has something to do with boiling the water or something. It's weird, and it only makes sense if, because it's Rapture, and they have to improvise a lot of this technology with a lot of nonsense. So um, 
basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up a perimeter, setting up a bunch of defensive trap type items around the environment to defend ourselves with. And um, basically that this is going to be the first example of something that will be referred to as the gathers in Bioshock 2, which is you're basically setting up a perimeter of a bunch of defensive type items and then um, waiting out the battle in a fixed location. Sort of like, um, the, it's a defend a, defend a location type objective, so to speak. And uh, the gathers are actually a lot more fleshed out in Bioshock 2. But basically I'm just going to sit here in front of the thing and turn it all the way. I'm not going to stop until it's done all the way. Because I have a natural camouflage so they can't even see me doing it. I'm staying here completely invisible. Meanwhile, the turrets and the, and the uh, proximity mines and trap bolts that I already placed around the environment will be doing the, the work for me. Conveniently. Unless they happen to walk through me and then uh, the turrets end up shooting me. Or walk around me in my general area and the turrets end up shooting me. I'm still invisible, but the turrets are shooting me. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the quickest way of doing that, is just to ignore all the enemies and just keep going. But yeah, the gathers are definitely a lot more fleshed out in Bioshock 2, where you have a lot more trap type items. And uh, I didn't actually have the maximum amount of trap type items I could have had for this, because we don't have the, uh, the Cyclone Trap Plasma, which also would have been good for that. But as you can see, I made a very short work of that, so we really didn't need it in the long run anyway. Right over here is going to be a new engineering tonic after Ryan gives us some more dialogue. Think about it for a second, and 